Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're really diving into something that's been a bit of a hot topic. Yeah, kind of a debate, actually. Right. About whether instructional systems design, you know, the whole ISD thing is really as effective as, well, as it's been made out to be. It's a fair question, especially now when everything in the workplace seems to be changing so fast. Totally. And to get into it, I've been looking at some really interesting articles, like the attack on ISD. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one definitely doesn't hold back. Right. From 2000. And then to balance things out, we'll also bring in some of Guy W. Wallace's thoughts on the whole lean ISD approach. From 2002, right. So just a couple of years later. And it's important to think about the context back then. This was like the late 20th century when everyone was obsessed with systems thinking. Taking those ideas from engineering and manufacturing and applying them to, well, everything. Exactly. And that totally included how people approach training. Even if you aren't super familiar with the term ISD itself, there's a good chance you've been through some training programs built using those models. Like a step-by-step -step recipe, but for teaching. Yeah, kind of. But then that's where the attack on ISD comes in. It's like throwing down the gauntlet. Totally. It brings together all these big names in the field, and they really lay out the problems with traditional ISD, sometimes pretty harshly. So let's break it down. Their first big critique is that traditional ISD is just way too slow, especially for how quickly things move today. Yeah, like picture this. You're trying to launch this new product, right? And the clock is ticking. Every second counts. But the training for the people who need to sell it, stuck in development for six months. And that kind of lag is exactly what people criticize about traditional ISD. Makes sense. In fact, there's this one story in the article from Fred Nichols about how AT&T needed this new training solution like yesterday. I can only imagine. And the ISD people they brought in, they wanted 90 days. 90 days. Just to analyze the situation. Oof, I can feel the deadline pressure already. Right. And AT&T, they needed this done in 30. Mm. So that's exactly the issue. Traditional ISD can be really methodical when the business world wants things done, like yesterday. Agile is the name of the game. Exactly. Now, this is interesting, Wallace. He doesn't completely disagree with this whole speed issue. Yeah, he gets it. He's not oblivious. He says, straight up, that some ways of doing ISD, they can be really clunky. They can be a drag. But he offers this other perspective, this lean ISD model. It's all about speed and efficiency but without having to sacrifice quality. So not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, just finding ways to streamline. Exactly. And that's something important to remember about ISD in general. I think there are a lot of different approaches. It's not one size fits all. Exactly. Okay, on to the next criticism. Then, and this one, this one is a bit of a head scratcher. There's no there there. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean in this context? Right, when we talk about instructional design. Wow, what's the there? Well, it's like they're questioning the whole foundation of IST. Okay. Is it really this, like science with these fixed rules, or is it more of an art? Some critics, they'd say that really great training comes from experience and intuition, you know, really understanding who you're teaching. So like that amazing chef who can just whip up something incredible without needing a recipe. Exactly. It's like instinct and experience mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of magic. You yeah. Know? But Wallace, he comes back to this idea of goals goals like what are you actually trying to do he compares it to like a sourdough bread bakery versus a fancy culinary school they both work with food right but they're doing totally different things totally one's focused on like the craft and technique right and the other's all about like mass production getting those loaves out the door so with training are you trying to help someone bake for fun or are you setting them up to run a business that's the question and he uses this other example right. of like training pilots, High stakes. huge stakes, or surgeons. Those situations, you really need that structured, systematic approach of ISD. But for other things, maybe something more flexible is better. Which really highlights how important it is to know what you're trying to achieve with your training. For sure, yeah. because that's going to change how you approach the design. And probably which criticisms of ISD resonate most too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so criticism number three. Used as directed, it produces bad solutions. Ouch. That's a pretty rush thing to say. Yeah, it is. It's basically saying that following the ISD playbook too closely can backfire. Like ending up with something generic that doesn't actually work. Exactly. Like imagine you're trying to make a shirt, but you only have one size pattern. Right. One size fits all. Never works. Never. You're going to end up with a lot of unhappy people. Yeah. 
And that's kind of what they're saying about ISD trying to force fit a standard solution onto a diverse group of learners. It just doesn't work. And Wallace seems to agree with this point too, right? Yeah, he's all about tailoring the training to the specific audience. Makes total sense. Like you wouldn't train salespeople the same way you'd train, I don't know, engineers. Totally different jobs. Totally yeah. different training needs. And that's where understanding your learners, their context, what they already know is so, so important. Okay. And last but not least, the fourth big criticism it clings to the wrong worldview. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> this one's a bit more philosophical. Yeah, what's the wrong worldview when it comes to ISD? Well, critics are saying that traditional ISD kind of sees learners as these empty containers that just need to be filled with knowledge. Ah, uh, the stupid learner assumption. Exactly. Like, learners don't be anything to the table. And honestly, in today's world, where self-directed learning is so important, that view just doesn't fly. People need to be empowered to learn, to find what works for them. Exactly. And that often means ditching the really rigid structures of traditional ISD and giving learners more flexibility, mm -hmm. you know, letting them take ownership of their own learning journey. But realistically, how much flexibility is actually possible, especially in a work environment? Doesn't Wallace talk about how organizations are often strapped for resources and time? Right. And he does acknowledge that. Yeah. He talks about finding ways to create different levels of learning experiences or multiple entry points so people can jump in where it makes the most sense for them. OK, so it's a balancing act, respecting people's autonomy while still delivering the training in a way that, you know, actually works within the real world. Exactly. It's a tough needle to thread for sure. And it makes you wonder, you know, with all these criticisms, why is ISD still such a big deal? Why hasn't it been completely replaced by these other methods? Right. Like what's kept it going? Well, part of it is historical. We talked about how popular systems thinking was in the mid 20th century, right? So it kind of makes sense that those ideas would find their way into training and development. Like ISD was just riding the wave of what was already popular. Yeah, exactly. Even if it wasn't always the perfect fit for how people actually learn. Because, well, people aren't machines. Right, exactly. But to be fair, ISD does have some good points, too. Oh, for sure. It's not all bad. Like, one big one is that it gives everyone a common language to talk about instructional design. Which is really helpful if you're working on a big project, right? With different people involved. Oh, yeah. Totally. Like you've got your subject matter experts and your stakeholders and mm. other designers, and they can all use those same terms. So even if you're not like a diehard ISD fan, having that shared vocabulary is useful. Absolutely. It's like a starting point, you know, like a blueprint. You might change things up later on to fit this specific project. Yeah. But it helps to have that initial framework. To make sure everyone's on the same page from the get-go. Exactly. And, you know, even some of the people who criticize ISD the most... They admit there are times when that more structured approach is really important. Like when the stakes are higher. Right. So for really technical stuff or anything related to safety, that's where ISD can really shine. Makes sense. You don't want to mess around with air traffic control training. Exactly. Or like training for surgeons. Yeah. You really need that clear, systematic approach in those situations. So it's all about choosing the right tool for the job. Exactly. And, you know, I was thinking about this quote by the statistician George Box. He said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Hmm, I like that. So even if traditional ISD isn't perfect, it can still be useful. It's got some good tools and frameworks that can be really helpful. As long as you're not like blindly following the rules without thinking for yourself. Exactly. You've got to be willing to adapt, to borrow the good stuff and ditch what doesn't work. I'm that balance. Respecting the basic principles of good instructional design, but also being open to new ideas. And not being afraid to try new things, too, because things are changing so fast. Yeah. You know, what worked five years ago might not work today. So true. So it's all about being critical, about asking questions and figuring out the best way to reach your learners and help them actually learn. Instead of just like throwing information at them and hoping something sticks. Exactly. It's about being thoughtful and intentional mm -hmm. and remembering that Every learner is different. So true. Like they say, the only thing you can count on is change itself. Right. Especially in this field. Yeah. And, you know, when I look back at the attack on ISD now. Yeah. A lot of those criticisms, they weren't just complaining. It was like they could already see what needed to change in instructional design. OK, so what kind of changes are we talking about? What needed to happen? <laughs> well, for one thing, there's been this huge push towards making design more learner-centered. Oh, yeah. I've been hearing that a lot lately. It's not enough anymore to just, like, deliver the information in this really standard format. 
you got to make it engaging. It's got to be interesting. Yeah. And you've got to think about all the different ways people learn. So is that where all this stuff like micro learning and gamification comes in? And personalized learning paths? Exactly. All that stuff is about recognizing that learners, they're not just empty vessels. Yeah. You know? They bring their own experiences to the table. Yeah. And their own preferences. And tech has obviously played a big part in all of this. Huge. I mean, just think about mobile learning mm -hmm. or VR and AR. It's crazy how much it's changing things up. It's completely changing how we design training. We're not stuck in classrooms anymore. Right, which makes me wonder, with all these advancements, what happens to traditional ISD? Is it just, like, over? I don't know if I'd say it's over. It's more like it needs to evolve. Adapt or die, right? Kind of. But the good news is a lot of those core ISD principles, they still apply. Like mm -hmm. planning things out carefully, setting clear objectives. You've got to know where you're going. Right. And making sure you can actually measure the results. All that stuff is still important. But we can take those principles and combine them with these newer approaches. You get the best of both worlds. Exactly. Engaging, effective learning experiences that actually work for today's learners. It's about striking that balance, holding on to what works, but also being willing to innovate. And most importantly, really understanding the learners. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, all of this actually brings up a really important question for our listeners. Ooh, I like where this is going. Hit us with it. So after going through all of this, uh, all the criticisms, all the changes, what can people actually do? Yeah. What's the takeaway? Whether you're someone who designs training all the time or just someone who has to, like, put together a presentation every now and then. Right. Exactly. So if I had to boil it all down to one thing. Yeah. It's this never stop questioning. Don't just accept any approach to instructional design, you know, at face value. Not traditional ISD, not the latest trend, nothing. Really think about it. Be critical. Exactly. Does it actually make sense for your learners? Is it going to help them achieve their goals? If the answer is no, it doesn't matter how popular it is. It's not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. So be thoughtful, be intentional, and always, always put the learner first. Great advice. A huge thank you to our expert for guiding us through this whole debate. Definitely gave us all a lot to think about. And to everyone listening, thank you for joining us on another deep dive. Keep those questions coming and keep on learning. Mm -hmm.